Okay, on today's desktop review, we're going to be talking about the Car Arms K40. Though this review would be applicable to the K9, the 9mm version, instead of the 40 Smith & Wesson version. And also they have a smaller and larger frame size and slide size of this gun called the uh, T40 and the T9. More for tactical or target use. It's a bigger, heavier gun. And, uh, and they have a uh, MK and an M9, which is a smaller. And they vary by a few ounces up or down, depending on the size. Uh, so everything I talk about on the K40, would, um, the K9 would be just as well. These are all steel frame guns. Car Arms also has polymer frame guns, much more lighter, easier to carry. But I happen to like the all-metal versions. They're built like a Swiss watch. It really is uh, amazing uh, tolerances and how smooth the guns are. All right, so uh, this is one of my everyday carry guns. I switch on and off between guns, but this is one of the ones I carry. It's around 26 and uh, 26.7, 26 and a half ounces, somewhere around there, unloaded. And uh, but we're going to go over the features. And right now we're going to clear the gun. It's already been cleared, but just to show you, there's um, nothing in the magazine and nothing in the chamber. It's kind of dark down there. But there's nothing in the chamber there. All right. Okay, this is just a fantastic gun. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that I really like it. It's uh, very smooth operating. The All the controls are easy to operate. Um, starting from the top, we have um, uh, metal sights. These happen to be the night sights. And you could buy them with uh, night sights or with uh, regular uh, post dot sites or called bar dot sites and as far as the controls that I was getting to uh, there's not that many there's the one uh, slide release and slide lock which is also the disassembly latch then you have the magazine release button and that's it that's it on the gun nothing on this side and just the one control and the magazine release on this side a lot of handguns, uh, pistols, you'll have the uh, safety and uh, hammer drop, you'll have a slide release, you'll have a decocker, um, you might have a disassembly latch. Uh, this one is very simple, very smooth, and that's why it makes a great carry gun. Uh, it's been dehorned, there's not that many sharp edges, everything has been uh, smoothed out on the gun. Very pleasant to carry and shoot. The, uh, the trigger is one of the other controls. It's a smooth trigger, smooth combat trigger, double action only design. So you rack the slide, put it around in the chamber. You've got a, a long double action pull. The reciprocating slide partially cocks the striker and you're ready to use the trigger again, which would be um, pulling back the rest of the striker and releasing the striker to fire again. It has a longer reset, like double action only uh, striker fired weapons uh, tend to have. Sometimes the, the Glock actually has a very short reset. This one has a longer one. So we're going to show you that right now. So there's the double action pull. Now the slide is cocked from the operation. I didn't let go of the trigger. So you're going to be able to see the reset. You can hear it and feel it. There's the reset. And there's fully forward. So you don't have to go fully forward each time. When the, when the gun goes off and you fire it, you can release it and fire it again from there. So you can fire it fairly fast. You know, you probably get uh, four or five seconds, uh, four or five shots per second with uh, probably 0.2 split times, 0.225 split times, something like that. Uh, the grips are on the gun are a uh, textured soft polymer wraparound grips. There's a K on it for K arms. And K-Arms has been around for uh, for about 30 years or so, and very innovative design. They they took the um, the feed ramp and they offset it. They offset the feed ramp to the side to make room for the trigger and the camming mechanism to put this uh, 40 caliber um, cartridge in a very small package. Um, it's only 0.94 inches wide at the widest point, which is um, the slide and that's what a lot of gun companies aspire to is having that uh, under one inch which a lot of them aren't able to do and this is under an inch 
The grips might be a little bit wider than it, as you can see it is over an inch, but the slide part itself, which might be inside the waistband or whatever, is going to be very slim. This originally came with um, the bar dot sights, and I recently uh, sent to uh, online the car website. I ordered a, a front sight for the slide, and I actually installed it myself with the, the vise and so forth and the punch. And, and uh, it, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't really difficult with the right tools, and I was able to get that night sight. Now it's um, very bright at night, and I just wanted the one. I was spending so much on accessories and guns, I really didn't want to spend more money on a rear sight, which I really didn't need. Put the put the uh, flash sight picture of the, of the front sight on target, and bang, you're ready to go. No need to line it up with the rear sights. A lot of people actually uh, darken their rear night sights just so they can use the um, uh, the, the uh, front sight. All right, so and those are around thirty bucks, six dollars shipping. So about thirty-six dollars, and I had my front sight. And uh, speaking of that, be careful if you do order your own sights, uh, whatever kind you do order, they have uh, many to order from. Uh, on the car arms website and uh, there are two different slide designs it's called the new old style and new style slide and I think somewhere around 2005 they made the switch over because when I called my gun was made in 2005 they said I had to look inside the uh, the slide to see which style I had it turns out that the old style slide has the dovetails are wider than the new style they made more narrow dovetails so the sights won't fit one to the other and I happen to have the, the old style slide. And when I take the gun apart, I'm going to show you what the uh, how you can tell from the inside of the slide which one you have. The uh, magazines uh, hold six rounds of 40, and I believe the uh, the nine holds seven. And when you have bigger or smaller versions of this gun, you're going to have one less up or down depending which way you're going in size. Stainless steel, very rugged. Very easy to push button and the uh, magazine flies right out. So that's a positive. Like I said, there are uh, not too many uh, edges or protuberance. Very smooth. Very easy on the draw. The recoil is stout on the 40 on this gun. Some guns are softer shooting. I gotta say it wasn't the softest shooting 40 I fired, but the neoprene, I mean the uh, polymer, soft polymer does help to dampen the uh, recoil. Very easy gun to operate. The uh, slide is um, fairly easy to rack back. These uh, serrations are very grippy, though not sharp, and very easy to rack the slide. Whatever method you use, whether slingshot or saddle uh, method, they're, they're all very easy to rack the slide on a 40, which is impressive. So very easy to manipulate the, the weapon. As you can see, it has an external extractor uh, with a large claw. It works very well. This is the other side of the, the pin. Um, the markings on here, it's going to say K40 car, car arms, Worcester, Massachusetts is mentioned here. No warnings about reading the manual or anything like that, refreshingly. It's got a very large um, trigger guard space for gloved hands, which works very well. Right now, the holster that I'm using happens to be a Don Hume Jit Slide. It's not easy to put the belt through these small loops. Also, the gun fits. I don't think it was meant for the gun, but it fits very well. But when you grab the gun, there's no room for your knuckles, and it's difficult to get a full grip. A lot of times I'll cut away a portion here so it'll fit, but the, the stitching is right here, and I don't want to cut up this holster. I'm just going to get another one, and this way it'll fit, it'll fit me better. But this is good for now. It's been working. And ammunition I've been carrying in here... Um, Varying uh, 40 caliber, uh, Hornady, critical duty or critical defense. Right here we have um, Spear Gold Dots. One of the choice of law enforcement professionals because of its um, stopping power, penetration, and so forth. It's a, it's a stout round, and it comes in different uh, weights. I think 165 and 180 grain, you can get Gold Dots. Highly recommended. It's all stainless steel. You can uh, the regular version comes in uh, bright or actually a matte stainless steel. It'll be white. It'll be very similar in color to this. This happens to be the um, blackened stainless. And I bought this uh, used in pretty good condition. Though it does have some carry wear. It wasn't fired 
a, a lot, and it's in really great shape as far as a working gun is concerned. And since it has marks on it, a little bit of wear, I'm not afraid to use it and uh, do uh, training of uh, presentations out of the holster and so forth. So I'm not going to baby, you know, baby the gun. It's a, it's a working gun, so I don't mind that at all. I was going to change the grips, but these work so well, and they're slim, and they're not really um, grabbing onto my clothing when I'm uh, carrying. But if I find the right grips, I may replace those. And grips can be had from uh, car arms as well. If you go to the website, you'll see all different choices on accessories uh, for these guns. All right, so now we're going to take this apart. you got to make sure it's clear. And they're not the easiest guns to take apart, like Glocks and polymer guns where there's a slide hole back and then you disconnect it. This has to be, the slide has to be held back under the tension of the spring in order to push the disassembly um, notch out. So here's the notch, and we're going to bring that to the space underneath here. And you're going to see that right there, that that's um, the spot where you're going to push that through. But it's a really tough thing. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to... Um, do one of my tricks here, and we're going to have to we're going to have to push it with a the back of a screwdriver. All right, so let's do that right now. All right, here we go. So what I like to do is retract the slide right where the notch would be, right there. Flip it over, and I'm gonna take that little button and get a little bit of a little bit of a rack. Tap, and that pops right out. Instead of pushing on it, giving me a little wrap is really the easiest way to do that. Once you do that, and it comes back to this position, you wanna pull the trigger, always in a safe direction, and that slide will come right off. Okay, let's move the ammo out of the way. Magazines, give room here. Okay, so here's the uh, slide. There's the inside. So when you pull the trigger, you see the, the camming action right there. And that's the cam that will uh, retract the, the partially cocked striker. The, the pulling the trigger will completely cock that and then release it. That's why it's called a double action. Because it's actually cocking the rest of it and then moving forward. Unlike a Springfield XD or XDM, which is fully cocked and you're only releasing this here, this is like a Glock where it's partially cocked and you're pulling it to the rear and that's going to go forward. And here you'll see the spring, the trigger return spring, so that goes back and forth. As you can see, there's a, a lot of slide rails on here. Hence the smoothest probably because that's really finely machined and nice for it to ride on. Uh, this is a metal frame, but it's really not that heavy. That's why they're keeping the weight down. You got a smooth front strap, not checkered or serrated. Like because of the rubber grips, it's a really fine purchase. No, uh, no fear of um, slipping on that. Okay, moving on over to the slide. The slide is stainless steel, also and made from a solid, solid billet of stainless steel. So what I like to do is aim the barrel towards me, take the, uh, this is the spring guide rod, pull forward and that comes right out. It's under tension, hold on to it, be careful it doesn't fly out. Inside the recoil spring is the solid, um, I mean it's, a, it's steel, it's a hollow steel but very thick wall that's not thin and it's uh, fairly heavy so it's uh, not a really thin wall, hollow guide rod. <clears throat> the barrel pulls like this. Pulls out. There's the linkage hole there. That's uh, 3.5 inches, and in the in the, the K size, the T size is bigger, and the MK is smaller, just like the nine. Okay, so finally, really nice, nicely made uh, slide. Here's where the camming action, the striker. This pulls it forward under tension, and then it pulls the rest away and releases it. Right down in here, this is the safety plunger. So when the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear, only then will this be depressed and the striker will pull forward. So when you release that, that's going to uh, pull, allow it to go forward. Otherwise, if it's dropped on the muzzle and so forth, it won't go off. And most uh, handguns have that. Um, 
striker or hammer um, block. Okay, now I was going to show you how you can tell an old slide from the new slide design. All right, so this is an old slide design, and we know that because in this section right here, the striker block, it's called, right on that striker block, right there'll be a dimple right in the steel, like a round crevice, almost as if a drill was touched on it and, and a hole was made there. And I believe here as well, there'll be a hole. So there'll be two holes, one here and one here. And this has no, not holes, but more of a dimple or indentation in the metal maybe a 32nd inch deep or something like that. So here and here, this is the old style, so when I ordered my night sight, I made sure it was an old style front night sight. And uh, So now we're going to put it back together. <clears throat> a little bit tricky because it's a, it's actually a tight fit. So you got to wiggle a little bit and drop that in. Then we take our uh, guide rod, put it inside the spring, and make sure that the closed end of the spring goes onto the guide rod and the open end goes into the, the portion of the slide right here that contains the uh, guide rod and the spring. Be careful you got a good purchase on this so it doesn't slip out. Aim it in a safe direction, pull, and then put the um, guide rod into the hole while controlling it and then slip it down into the notch on the barrel. Be careful and make sure that it's uh, there. Then you take the uh, slide and put it into the grooves like that. Pull to the rear. And one like to do right here. Now there's a trick to this as well. You can't just bring it back and put the guide rod in through the hole because um, the linkage, this here has to go into the linkage in the barrel, which is back here. So what you want to do is move it a little bit, put the pin in where the linkage is in the barrel first. There it is right there. And then you want to retract it the rest of the way until the notch hole is right over where the pin is. Once it's there, you can push down on it. And then wiggle it until it goes into place. And there's a hole here where this part goes in. And that's it. Now we're going to test it. Rack the slide, pull the trigger. That works great. Hold down the trigger, retract the slide again, check the reset, and it works just fine. And now you're good to go, back in business. That's how you would take it apart, field stripping for cleaning, repairs, or whatever. All right. Okay, now as far as performance, this is an accurate gun, reliable gun. And uh, this pistol has just exceeded all my expectations. It's, it's built like a, a fine watch or a Swiss watch because it's just so smooth. Everything is so smooth. The, the release of the magazine, the feel of the trigger. When you rack the slide, the, it's glass smooth. And it's just a really, really nice mechanism. And you can just feel the quality when you rack the slide. They're polymer versions. You don't get quite that feeling as you do the old metal versions of the car arms uh, handguns. And that's just uh, uh, exquisite. Um, you could do rapid fire strings. Uh, it is 40, so it's more powerful. A little bit harder to control on target for distant targets. Double action only. But it's meant as a self-defense and a combat weapon. And so combat accuracy is fine. So a really nice uh, gun. And mine is going to be less jumpy, you know, for uh, for the recoil and the snappiness of the um, of the barrel getting back on target. Uh, but still fully controllable, a great carry gun. The magazines are very slim, so these are very easy to um, uh, put on the uh, in the pocket or put on your belt. And the carry spares, these are really light and slim, almost like a 1911 in miniature. So these can go on your belt two of those or one of those throw in your pocket and you're gonna have six plus one and six and you're gonna have 13 rounds you know ready to go of a 40 caliber uh, powerhouse and then 40 is a powerful round you can get up to 550 foot pounds on some of those cartridges and that's a lot you know 550 is a is a lot of foot pounds of energy for a for a handgun and there you have it there's my review of the car arms k40 handgun thanks for watching <laughs>